and welcome back to Open Studio. So before I get started painting, um, I wanted to uh, share a big thank you with you. So if you're watching the whole channel, you've seen this on the Tech Tuesday video, um, and if you're just watching the Open Studio, um, I wanted to make sure uh, everyone who's doing just that gets this thank you as well, but the channel has passed a big milestone. Uh, we have just reached a thousand subscribers, so uh, I can't do this without you guys. You all have been amazing. I'm glad you're kind of hanging out with me, um, and I look forward to growing things, but there's a big thank you in there for you as well. So um, what I am doing is if you jump over to the community uh, tab on the front page, um, until February 3rd, uh, 2023 you can add a comment to the post that, that is there you'll see it and um, I'm going to be uh, giving away a small piece of original art as a thank you for the thousand and uh, I feel like I'm gonna do this a lot because I really do appreciate it so as we reach these milestones um, I really want to make sure I give back as much as I can so thanks for hanging out this is great um, if you're new and you would like to be part of the community that's unbelievable I love it just uh, click that uh, subscribe button and uh, the bell icon and you will be good to go all right enough of that so what I'm doing with this now um, I'm gonna grab the airbrush to start this um, sidecar is just about done there's a little bit of um, like a light blue cast that I need to put on it but I'll do that near the end when I can do everything but I want to darken this up a little bit especially right in here so I'm going to just grab the black which in this case what am I going to use uh, I forgot to mix up more of this this is um, one to ten so it's one part paint to ten parts 4011 reducer and 4011 reducer is my go-to reducer with this paint um, it just for me it just works better than everything else um, I don't I don't mess with any of the other reducers that they have they all do different things but for this paint and for what I do the 4011 really really works well um, so it's worth its weight in gold really so that's straight black so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of go in here once I get the airbrush to start working now when I do this uh, this doesn't appear in my photograph this is basically all these areas here these dark areas are all the same value but since I have to darken some of this anyway what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this chance to add a little bit of um, artistic license to it and it's very subtle um, but it's really gonna have a neat impact on the three-dimensionality of the painting so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a dark darker in these areas here and then I'm going to fade it lighter as I get out to the end so that'll give this this um, sidecar that feeling of the roundness that it has as it tucks in and again it's going to be really subtle um, you'll feel it more than see it which is exactly what I want now when I'm darkening something when I'm taking the value down on it I've already got all that cool um, texture that I kind of put in with the other steps so this, since this paint is really thin, it's also very transparent. So I can just lightly go over the whole thing and I'll still retain a lot of that texture while just kind of dumping down the value. And um, I know we talked about it a little bit uh, on, on some of the other uh, episodes of um, Open Studio, but, um, but I thought it would be good to kind of mention it here too as well. Uh, so I'll, as you guys already know I mean from watching these um, I end up repeating myself a lot but I think that's also valuable because as I kind of show you the same things over and over again um, you'll see how m much they they kind of poke into my paintings you know those things I keep doing over and over again are really hallmark to the way the painting looks in the end all right so I'll start with these two because they're about the darkest that they're going to be And again, I can go over the whole thing because it's transparent, so I don't lose a lot of that texture that's there. So that's good. Now I'm going to move on to the spot between the springs here. I don't have to be super careful about the uh, edge of the springs. You know, I don't have to paint it in like I did the last time uh, because I'll be working on those springs and especially on this side of the spring, it's darker anyway from the shadow. So I don't really have to even worry about getting it in the right way. So while I'm kind of filling this in and doing this, I also want to mention something else too. So we are on, I would think, what, episode 23 or 24 
I'm losing track. I, I never know which episode it is until I actually edit it and put it up. I'm like, oh, really? We're on that far? So anyway, um, the point of this is each one of these is a half an hour episode, as you guys have been kind of keeping track of, right? Um, I occasionally will do two, like pre-record one or two episodes. But for the most part, I'm doing this painting uh, about a half an hour, an hour a week when you look at it. Um, and this painting is coming along. So this, what I wanted to kind of mention to people is um, if you are in a position where you're trying to fit your artwork into your life and you're having difficulty doing that, what I want to say to you is just do anything. Just take any time you can to paint. Uh, even if it's 15 minutes, because look at what we've got done with me only spending a half an hour a week on this. And you guys see it half hour a week, but I really do only spend about, you know, the uh, half an hour or sometimes I do two episodes in, back to back to kind of get ahead of them. Uh, but still, it's only one or half an hour or one hour a week. And I have all this done. Yes, granted, it has taken a number of months to get to this point, but still we have a positive steps forward on a painting, on a big painting. So what I want to stress to you guys and girls is um, if you're struggling with that, just put in whatever time you can. Trust me, it adds up. Uh, it just, I can't say it enough. So even if you have 15, 20 minutes a week, do that. Because what will happen is too, once you get started, once you get in a, in a groove, You'll find the time. You'll you'll make the time for it. But it's getting your foot in the door to start. That's that's the key. You know, carve out that time so that uh, so you you can get it done and uh, it'll pan out. What I'm doing is I'm looking for my other glove, my other painty glove. I don't see it because what I'm doing is I'm actually resting my hand on. The ungloved hand is on the surface, so I don't want that. So what I can do for now is I can just swap the glove over to this hand, and that way I can rest it on there. And then when I switch the paintbrush, I'll, I'll switch it. I do have two of these. I have, you know, I what I do is I buy. I think I mentioned this before. I just um, buy these um, cotton gloves on Amazon. And then um, I use them for a lots of different things. So I use them to when I'm when I'm framing. Uh, I use these to handle the glass because the glass I have is museum glass, and if you get fingerprints on it, you can see it really really easily. So I handle all the glass with these gloves. But then I also kind of handle the finished artwork with this as well for the same reason. I don't want oils and stuff on them. Um, but they also come in handy for painting. So when they get kind of dirty, like this has some paint on it and stuff. Um, then I'll bring it over to the painting area, cut off the two fingers and the thumb, and now I have a glove that I can paint with. And again, these look terrible. <laughs> what this is, is this is not dirt. It's uh, paint overspray from, you know, from just kind of working with them. So, uh, and then when they get really, really bad, uh, then I'll retire them and just keep, you know, rotating them through. So... That was a lot of extra stuff to unpack right there. Sorry about that. <clears throat> All right, so I've got the really thin black. So I'm going to take advantage of having that in the brush, and I'm going to kind of jump up on the top of this sidecar right here and just add a few of those really, like, darker um, details that are in that rusted material on the top. So I don't want to go nuts with this. I, I essentially... Um, when I put on all the details with the brown and the paintbrush, I'm kind of bridging the gap now between the uh, the airbrush or the paint what the paintbrush can do and what the airbrush can do. So the airbrush can do some really fine, tight stuff, um, but not as tight as the paintbrush. So the paintbrush also can't. For me, I have a difficult time doing really soft washes. Get you a little bit closer to that so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I have a difficult time doing really even washes with acrylic paint and, and a paintbrush, but the airbrush does that very well. Oh, and you may have noticed that I've um, adjusted the palette cam. I'm getting better at this tech stuff, so now the palette cam is much bigger, and you can, you'll actually be able to make out what I'm doing there. So that will be the new, the new feature with that. All right, I feel good about that now. So that's, I wanted to get that before I started working on the forks because, again, if I do all that detail work on the springs and the forks, um, see how fuzzy that is. 
um, I'd have to I'd have to go back into this area and if I wanted to redarken it and then uh, and then I'd end up getting all that dark overspray on all the detail that I just put on so I wanted to get that out of the way first all right and I didn't want to forget it either because when I'm when I start these forks I'm going to start down here uh, to kind of keep it all making sense so first thing I'm going to do to check now you remember way back is I kind of hit this with a really light yellow to kind of give it a good start um, what I'm going to first check is to see if that yellow is enough in there so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of looking at the reference photo which is right here which you guys can't really see um, yeah looks good um, yeah I think it's it's good it's good enough it's good enough so again you know, I want to make sure that there's enough of that yellow on before I start putting all the detail on and then realize that I need more yellow or more white or whatever it would be. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the base color of those forks to make sure that I've really got it. And I, I think that's pretty solid. So I'm going to roll with that. All right. The next thing on this then is the, the rusty details. I started it because I was I had the color kind of in here. But I'm really going to kind of dig in now and I'm going to start down at the bottom. The rust on this is made up of uh, kind of two colors or three colors. Um, in, in this area here, since I'm, I'm glad I already did some of it because these bigger areas mimic what's going on right here. Um, so when I was doing this, I, I, you know, included a little bit of that there and that's good. But the other parts are brown with this little kind of hinged uh, tinge of um, orange on it too. So we're going to start with the brown, I think. We're going to put some of the rusty details in, and then, uh, and then we'll be able to airbrush around it. All right. So, yay, palette came. All right. Do I have brown on here? You guys can see, yeah, you guys can see the whole palette. I just had to double check. Um, yeah, that's going to work. So what I'm going to do is, um, it was here in this big splotch right here, but this got contaminated with other colors. I was just using it for everything. So I'm going to start a new, this is brown, incidentally, from Createx. Uh, so I'm going to start a new one over here. So I'm going to have, take the brown, a little bit of black, and I'm going to try to get that rusty color. What I'm keeping an eye on is... Um, the redness of it or the lack of redness and I, I need i need a real good rusty color and the brown sometimes doesn't have enough red in it but this looks okay all right so now what i'm going to do is kind of go in in the painting and just kind of start putting in swap the glove around there we go put in all those those little rust specks those spots of rust Trying not to make this super like machine gun, you know, um, try to vary the dots. The paint brushes, again, these Windsor Newton brushes are, are fantastic. And so they'll, um, they hold their point very well. So if I were to like sewing, sewing machine this, where just kind of dot it like this, I'll make the same dot every, almost every time. Get you guys closer to this too. So you can get a feel for what we're doing. All right. This um, back, um, the, the strut in the back here, is, um, is almost all rust. It's all brown. So we'll, um, we'll, we'll attack that when we kind of get the uh, airbrushing going on the, um, on the front part of it. So for now, it's just a bunch of little dots. And again, I try to twist the paintbrush in my hand and also move the angle of the paintbrush. And that will change the, the dot as I'm doing it. Again, if I hit it at one angle all the time, I'll just repeat that dot over and over again. And I don't want that. I don't want it to look real repetitive. So what's nice about this too, this painting, where like the uh, Island Creek painting um, was almost note for note for for the uh, photograph all the twigs and sticks in that I really did take them right from the photograph I was really careful about kind of keeping it all you know accurate to the photograph this is not the same case so I'm not doing that flip technique where I'm putting the copy on top to make sure I get all the specks of rust in the same spot I'm really taking a lot of liberties with this and that goes to show you hopefully that you know not everything you do has to be one way so i really like working with that 
absolutely literal translation of a photograph. I do love working that way. But sometimes, you know, it's okay to for me to just kind of do whatever. Yeah, in the end, you'll never know unless you have them side by side or even one on top of one another. Um, but, um, but again, it's just a different way to work. You know, it's like th this will still give the same same feel as if I did it note for note, essentially. But, um, yeah, it's a different way to work, I guess. Okay, so there is the, um, the, the division line between the two, um, two pipes, or two pipes, there we go, the, the, the two bars here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put that in very lightly because I'll be airbrushing against that. And by putting it in with a paintbrush first, um, I'll already have that hard edge in there. Same thing with these details around the clips. These are really, really dark. But if I put them in with the brown first, I have something to shoot for later. Even though these will be a lot darker, they'll be closer to black when I'm done. The reducer that I'm using in the, in the cup here in, in the bottom, you can just see it right at the bottom there. This is still 4011 reducer in this little reservoir. So I use the same reducer that I airbrush with to paintbrush with too. So I know it's a long way off, We're probably only about a third of the way through this painting. So we still have a ways to go, but to give you the preview, I've already decided that uh, I'm going to be doing a um, razor blade painting for the next open studio. So that will be a lot of fun. Got to get out my macro lens for that one. So in here, where the division of these two, um, the two struts are um, in the front end, um, what I'm doing is in this darker area, there, there's a lot of shading and shadowing going on here between the two. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm just setting up that texture now with it. So that when I go to put that shading in, it'll be a lot like what I did up here, uh, up in the, you know, uh, in the beginning of this video where I darkened up the sidecar. So it's the same kind of thing. The texture will already be in. So all I'll have to do is put in the shading to get that to where it needs to be. This whole, this whole tube here is brown. So, um, so that's going to, all that stuff is really going to be buried. All kinds of stuff going on in this. This painting, I'm telling you, I I didn't expect, I knew it was going to take longer than some paintings because of all the texture on it. I did not see this taking as long as it is. And it's not because um, it's an open studio and I'm talking during it because really I'm, I'm working. I'm, you know, it's not like a, a live feed where I, I've got a lot of distractions and we're messing around and all that. I really am just kind of hammering away at this. But it has taken a long time, which is, again, it's fine, it, 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 but it's neat when it, uh, when it kind of happens like that, where it's like, wow, I didn't realize this. And the only problem is, of course, if this was a painting for a, uh, a collector, if this was a commission, and I had given that person an estimate on what this painting was going to cost and I ran into this, then it would be a whole different thing. I would be a sad panda because me not understanding how long something is going to take is on me. So if I give them an estimate and it, it is one thing and it is my responsibility to make sure it comes close to that if it was on me. Of course, if it's a commission, which luckily I don't take too many anymore like that, but if it's a commission and you're, and you're taking them and the changes are on the collector, then that's a whole different thing. Then you can move around that estimate that you gave them. And most people understand that. You can also make it clear from the beginning that, that if it seems like, and you'll get a good read on the person who, who you're working with. If they seem very undecisive, that's when you can bring something like that up, um, meaning, you know, okay, here's here's what it is. We're going to work with this, and, uh, you know, here's what you get. You know, you get a rough sketch or whatever you decide to do, and then you get, you know, however many revisions you feel are adequate for that collector, 
And then from there you say, okay, you can make as many changes as you'd like along the way, but after that, it, that, that is added to the cost. So, <clears throat> and again, you know, I talk about this all the time about a win-win. Um, it has to be a win for both, both parties. For me, it's, if it isn't, it's not worth doing. So if someone's going to be real difficult, you know, and has, it is very needy in a way, then that's not, that's not the collector for me. Um, that, that, you know, that, that person needs, uh, another artist that, that can be more receptive to constant changes or complete artistic control. So, um, yeah, something to keep in mind. All right. So that's really good. I guess I'm going to, I'm just going to keep going with the same thing. Cause this, this rusty texture happens everywhere, but you start to see how I've got all that kind of locked in now. So that's in really good shape. So yeah, I'm just going to keep going. What do we got going on here? It's really dark, and then I got... It's so nice having this HD stencil underneath everything. Because I'm relying heavily on the reference photo. But it's so nice when I catch a glimpse of the details that are, you know, that are really there from the HD. makes it so much easier it's really what i would have done i mean if i had drawn this whole thing out you know transferred it on here and then had to draw it all out it's exactly what the hd stencil is giving me is exactly what i would have done anyway which is just oh it's such a breath you know of fresh air because not that i don't like doing the setup drawing but i would set aside enough time for that setup drawing and it would be a large, if it was something this complex, it could be as much time, you know, not as much time as the painting itself, though, but a lot of the time could be just setting up that drawing. I used to really make sure that the drawing was 100% like locked in and accurate before I moved on to the painting. And that takes a long time. All right, so there's the break line here which I'm going to ignore for now because it's that black rubber material. So I'm just going to paint that in after I do all the work on the struts. Some texture in this too, some really fine texture on these two must be different metal um, or they were painted differently because the, the rust texture on this is very fine. So there's the other spring in the back. Don't worry about that. Don't have to worry about that. It's the bottom of the spring. Good. Rolling along nicely. So let me move over to the other side here. So as of the filming of um, this portion of this painting, it's still winter here in Ohio. It's the very end of January right now. And I am telling you, <laughs> I must be getting a old in my old age because uh, I cannot wait for spring yeah it's pretty and all but uh man it's cold all right that's it I'm not I'm done being grumpy <laughs> get off my lawn there we go all right same thing here um texture in the dark areas there's a lot of dark areas here it's all very like gray and dirty almost and uh even the black areas I can kind of cut back in now. These will be a lot darker when it's done. But uh, again, what I'm doing is I'm replacing the HD stencil areas with, with paint. So I'm covering it all up, you know, using those, the information on there and just using it to cover it all up. And of course, um, in the description uh, down below, you can um, click on the uh, any of the links for the for the equipment that I'm using for this painting and most paintings that I do. Uh, but HD stencil is on there too, so definitely do check them out um, if uh, you're an airbrusher. Um, I don't I haven't used it with anything other than an airbrush. It's a very very fine fine stencil like a silk screen. And you guys saw that in the beginning. Um, I don't know, though, that if you could... I've never tried to use it with just, like, 
you know, a squeegee and, and thick paint or, or like, like a screen print type of situation, or if you can brush right through it, you know, I, I don't know. I've never tried it, but it, 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 it could be possible. So that means if you're not an airbrusher and you still want to try out an HD stencil, there might be a way to do it too. They're certainly made for spray application. That's, that was the idea behind them. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Interesting stuff. All right. A little bolt here so you can kind of get the indication of that. It's kind of orange, so when I do the orange, I'll hit that little bolt that's on top. It seemed to have oxidized in kind of a cool way. All right. Now, the rust as it comes up on the top part here, it's, um, it's again, it's brown in the back here, but in the front, it's, it's more gray. So I'm going to um, switch over to a gray once I get enough of the brown in here so that I don't have to uh, bounce back and forth. Yeah, so there is a kind of a boundary here between the brownish rust and then when it turns to gray. So it's probably just the lighting that's doing that. But uh, we'll still get it in the right way. Okay, back side of this. Texture on this guy, too. Get that in, too. So now that the brush is kind of, I'm kind of losing the paint in the end of the brush, um, this is a good opportunity, since I'm switching colors anyway, to clean this out. There's a little water. Uh, you can't really see it. It's off, off the side. But there's a you know, little washout bucket right here at the, in front of the palette. <clears throat> So now I'll grab the gray. So this I have to make up this gray. So I'll just grab some of the black, a little bit of the white, and that is my gray. So it's it's rinse and repeat for this really. So it's just adding this gray in. This might be too thin, but I'll work with this for now. It'll give me a good a good base because I'll be able to kind of scumble this in in a way. There we go. And then once it gets up to here, it just transitions into all the other rest. So I don't really know what it's doing there, but I like it. All right. Good. Good, 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 good. Yeah, same thing on the side. This, for some reason, it's it's a lot more gray. It might actually be dirt. Um, it's hard to tell. So we'll get that texture going on there. A little hair there. That's going to be good. It's going to be good. So with that texture, so what I need to do here is I need to redefine this, with these edges. And what I'll do is when we, when we jump back next week, I'll probably start with that. That'll be good. Because if I can get these edges now, yeah, I'm going to have to. Um, that's probably what I'll end up. Well, you know what? I can start doing it now and then we'll pick it up next week. So what I'll do is I'm going to grab a little bit of the white and the yellow ochre, which is the two colors that I use to make up that, the, um, the edge of it. Where's my yellow ochre? That's not it. <laughs> Oops. That's still going to work, though. Um, that's brown. I'm literally flopping around when all I got to do is put out yellow ochre. All right. That right there, which you just saw there, that was me being lazy. I'm like, yeah, maybe I can make that color when literally it's right here. So, yeah. Moral of that story is don't be lazy. All right. While I mix this up, I think this is a good place to stop for, for this week. Um, I'll back it up real quick so you can see kind of the full effect of that texture as it comes in. Again, this, this whole painting is all uh, an exercise in, um, in subtlety. Uh, and it's a collective, you know, kind of the way it all melts together in your head 
that uh, will really pull this together. So it, it's coming along. It really is. So again, thank you for everyone who is subscribing, for my future subscribers. Um, I, I totally appreciate all of you so much. So uh, that's what we got. So for Open Studio and Steve Leahy, I will catch you guys all on the next one. Thanks a lot.